Hi, I'm Sarah Moskowitz, and I'm a certified child passenger safety technician in Providence, Rhode Island. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating how to install the Graco Slim Fit 3LX car seat, not to be confused with the Graco Slim Fit car seat, which is slightly wider, but the Slim Fit 3LX has become pretty popular due to the fact that it can fit three across in many vehicles. This video does not replace your owner's manual, your user's manual and it does not replace meeting with a certified child passenger safety technician in person. You can always send me an email. I'm happy to find somebody in your area. The Slim Fit 3 LX rear faces from five pounds to 40 pounds or up to 49 inches, or when there is less than one inch of space from the bottom of the adjuster handle to the top of the child's head. The seat forward faces from 22 pounds, but it's preferable to keep your child rear facing up until 40 pounds until they max out the rear facing limits of the seat, up until 65 pounds, and again, 49 inches is the height limit. The Slim Fit 3 LX also can be used as a booster. Graco has a minimum age of four to be using the seat as a booster, but kids typically aren't ready for boostering until around five or six, and I will put a link in the description below of a great article where you can learn more about when your child might be ready to start booster training. The cup holders on the seat are completely optional. If you, There are two of them. If you want to install them, you just pop them into those holes right there and you can, there's a button underneath to pop them right back out again. The seat comes with a body pillow, which you're going to remove for forward facing. There's also a head insert and remove that for forward facing. And the strap covers are optional unless for some reason you are forward facing a child between 22 and 25 pounds. Again, we recommend rear facing until the limits of the, the rear facing limits of the seat. But if for some extraordinary reason you do need to forward face a child under 25 pounds, you must use the strap cover. The Graco Slim Fit 3 LX has a great um, easy access belt path by lifting up this cover panel and bottom panel, you will see a built in lock off. It is red and gray, and what this does is locks the seatbelt. So you don't actually have to lock the vehicle seatbelt manually anymore um, when using this seat. So to open the forward-facing lock-off, you're gonna pull down on the gray piece, so the red piece will spring up. The seat does have four reclining options. One and two are for rear-facing, three and four are for forward-facing. And if you're using the seat in booster mode, you must use recline option four. This is currently in a rear-facing position. To recline the seat, you're going to squeeze this gray lever at the bottom of the seat and push down in the leg area of the seat and it's going to snap into place. So now we have it on reclined forward, which is what I'm going to use today. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the top tether from the back of the seat. It is a metal J hook, which means that it has a flexible side on the bottom. So you're going to slide your thumb behind it to squeeze that piece and it comes right off. To put it back on, you just snap it on like that. So put that top tether over the front of the seat. To loosen it, you're just gonna lift up on this tab and that will let you extend the webbing. I'm going to lift up that cover so that I can access the belt path. I have my lock off open. I'm going to take the vehicle seat belt and route it through the belt path, which is closest to the vehicle seat right here. So reach around. Buckle the seatbelt. Now, you want to make sure there are no twists in the belt. Think. Now, to get a secure install, what you want to do is push down on the seat and back into the vehicle seat while pulling up on the shoulder belt only. So, if you can see over here where my hand is, the top belt is called the shoulder belt, and the bottom portion is the lap belt. So I'm going to pull up on the shoulder belt while pushing down and back. Now I'm going to hold the belt flat while I try to put the red piece of the lock off down and fold up the gray piece to see if that will close. Sometimes your seatbelt might actually be too snug and the lock off won't close. So in that case you want to grab hold of the shoulder belt again let go of the lock off. I'm gonna let a little bit of the seatbelt go. And once again, try to close the red piece with the gray piece on top. And using both thumbs, it just snapped shut. 
Now the next step is to attach the top tether. Before I do that, for my own peace of mind, I wanna check how secure my install is. You wanna make sure that your seat does not move more than one inch side to side or front to back, and do that by testing at the belt path with your non-dominant hand. Okay, so the seat's actually not moving. Great. So now you're gonna take your top tether like this with the flexible side down. In this vehicle, we route under the headrest and I'm finding my top tether anchor, which is in a sedan, usually on the back dashboard. And you simply press down on the top tether. It's gonna click shut. And then you're gonna pull on that tail to remove all the excess webbing and move that out of the way. Now is the part where you actually are supposed to test for movement. So it is not moving at the belt path. And then you're going to want to make sure when your child is in the seat to adjust the headrest to the appropriate height. So in forward facing, the shoulder straps should be coming from the slot at or above the children's shoulder. So they should be coming down and not curving up from behind the child. So to adjust those straps, you're just going to lift and lower the headrest as needed.